Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the original stories by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed, Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Oh, everything at once, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Oh, Mom, is that you out there? It's me. Let me in. I can't. The phone's ringing. Well, just open the door. I let myself in. Oh, it's more complicated than that. Please wait. Claudia. Hello. Oh, David, I can't talk to you. Mama's out in the hall waiting to come in for dinner. Of course I intend to let her in, but you rang at the same time, so I couldn't. Of course I would have opened the door first if I could have, but there's a big, heavy crate you bought us in front of it, and I can't move it. It came while I was out. When will you be home? You're at the corner? Why didn't you say so? I wouldn't have wasted so much time talking to you. I love to, but I've got to rescue Mama. Coming, Mama. That was David. Let me in, Claudia. I feel like a cigar store Indian standing out here on your doorstep. Now, Mama, before I open the door, I want to explain to you. There's a big crate right in here in front of the door, about four feet tall and four feet wide, and it's very heavy, and I can't move it. And the door won't open wide, so you'll just have to squeak through it sideways. Really, Claudia, you make coming to visit you so simple and pleasant. What's in the crate? I don't know. Something David went shopping for yesterday. Now, I'll open the door as far as it'll go, but don't walk into it. All right, Claudia. It's only six inches. Well, how wide are you? More than six inches. You just have to hold your breath, Mama. What is that crate doing in front of the door anyway? I don't know that either. I was out shopping. When I came back, I could hardly get in the house myself. The elevator man must have let the crate in. Anyway, try it, Mama. Take off your hat and coat. If I take off my nose and hips, too, it still won't be enough. <laughs> Well, here comes my foot. Now an arm. See, you're doing fine. Now take a deep breath and stand as tall as you can stand. That's how I did it. And try to imagine you're a noodle. Here I come. It's now or never. Out. <laughs> Good, you made it. I'm a very squashed noodle. You look very rakish, Mrs. Brown, with your hair over one eye and the buttons opened out the front of your dress. I'm exhausted. <laughs> That crate better be worth the trouble. David went shopping for it yesterday, and he said it was his contribution to the running of the household. And I promised I wouldn't open it till he came home. He won't be able to come home. It's, he's thicker than I am. Now, we'll just sit here and relax, Mama. Dinner's all ready. You ought to see my kitchen. It's as neat as a pin. I've gotten so I don't dirty one extra dish. I only dirty the unextra ones. You know, the ones I use. <laughs> but you have to wash dishes yourself. You get a little careful before you use it's one. It's all a matter of being organized. Good evening, Claudia. Mother. But David. What's the matter? Aren't you glad to see me? But David. It's me. You look as if I had just materialized out of thin air. I think you have just materialized. I think you're a ghost. As a matter of fact, I don't think you exist at all. Well, that's an original greeting, I must say. We were all ready to get you through the front door with a shoehorn. I'm sorry to disappoint you, darling, but I came in the back door. The back door? Mama, the back door. It's only for milk. Oh, I give up anyway. Oh, my brilliant woman, I can see who the brain around here is. Oh, don't get too oh. conceited about it. David, tell us what's in the crate. Well, what do you think? Do we have to guess? Yep. Oh, I give up. I give up, too. Thank heavens. Now, David, tell us. I won't tell you. I'll open the crate and let you see it yourself. Oh, you miserable good-for-nothing. I hate you. I never keep you in suspense like this is not fair. I'm going to rip it apart with my bare hands. <laughs> Oh, dear. He's gotten so important. Why, I knew David when he was a sweet little boy. Now look at That's him. That's what happens to the mama when they get their own wives and their own homes. They think they're the only fish in the puddle. No, I'm the only brainy fish in this puddle. Conceited fish. <laughs> David, I can start to see what it is. It's all white. And he's got crawl me about it. 
Whatever it is, it looks terribly expensive. And for what it was, it's uh, very cheap. This little object is going to completely revolutionize this whole household. It's a full-time maid. You're not so dumb, Mrs. Brown. That's almost what it is, a mechanical full-time maid. David, stop talking and open it. There, now. There, that does it. Now... All we have to do is to tear off the paper. I'll help you undress it. David, are you sure it's not a washing machine? Positive, but it's a relative. Here we go. Ah. Looks like a washing machine, David. Nope, look again. <gasps> it's a dishwasher. Yeah, what do you think of that? I almost guessed. A dishwasher. I never dreamt. David, what are we going to do with a dishwasher? Wash the dishes. But that's my job. What's the matter with the way I wash them? Nothing, but this is modern. Now, look, darling. This is an age of mechanical wonders that we live in. We may as well make the most of it. How come you didn't get a washing machine? All the ads say that the happy bride is the one who owns one. Clothes you wash once a week. Dishes three times a day. He really isn't so unbrainy, Claudia. I'm not so sure I could trust our dishes to this machine. How does it know what to do? It knows. That's what it's for. I see what she means, David. After all, it's only a machine. Only a machine? Well, I like that. Well, I'll have you know this machine not only washes dishes, but soaps, rinses, and dries them as well. I don't believe it. You don't, eh? All right. We'll connect it up and show you how it works. I've always managed to do them pretty well by myself. But what happens, David, if in the middle of everything it, it changes its mind? It hasn't got a mind. Then how can it do the dishes in the first place? Doing the dishes doesn't take a mind. Well, I knew a woman once who had an automatic phonograph that never broke any records. It just chewed them up in little pieces and spat them out. <laughs> what did this cost? None of your business. Listen to how he talks, Mama. David, you can do dishes by hand for practically nothing. Women. Honestly. Just because their grandmothers did something a certain way, they go right on, never questioning, never thinking it could be improved on. It takes a man to realize the advantages that science has developed. Listen to him, Mama. I'm perfectly willing to be convinced. I just don't think you can convince me. All right, we'll see. Come on, girls. Now, let's push this thing into the kitchen and attach it up. There we go. I had the new plumbing put in while you were out. Oh, that's what those little pipes are. I thought they just grew there. Like toadstool. <laughs> David, is it going to work? Mm, we'll soon see, but I want you to keep one thing in mind. I think we can manage that. Now, I have installed this machine very rapidly. Of course, uh, according to the directions. Exactly according, darling. But nevertheless, it was a quick job, so... I hope it... you notice, Claudia. He's already making excuses. I notice. But I always say that if something is good, it'll work no matter well, what. Hush up, you two. Now, Claudia, read the directions again and tell me what the next step is. Read the directions? You sound like a school teacher, David. Mama, why is it that when a man gets mechanical, he gets stuffy, too? Claudia, read the directions. The directions say that the next thing is to wash the dishes. <laughs> now, let me see. All right. Now, look carefully, Claudia. Mm -hmm. Now, this metal basket, see? see yeah, here? yeah. Now, this is where you put the dishes. And here are the glasses? Mm, right. And here are the silver. Right. Now, before you start, you put in the soap right through here. Then you close the top, turn on the water, and that's all there is to it. You mean now we can take a walk, and when we come home, the dishes will be all washed and hung up to dry? Mm, exactly. You know, I'm starting to think David wasn't just talked into this dishwasher by some super salesman at the store. I'm not the kind of man who gets talked into things, except getting married. Ah. Now, let's, uh, let's put in the dirty dishes. Dirty dishes? Yes, uh, hand them over here to me, will you? We haven't any. We haven't had dinner yet. Claudia prepared dinner for three and not a dirty dish left over. This is a fine how do you do. I go to all of this trouble and what do I find? No dirty dishes. I'm sorry, David. Well, we'll adapt ourselves to the situation. We'll wash the dishes before we eat. Before? It sounds mm -hmm. like an awful waste of energy. Oh. Do it, Claudia. Don't argue. That's true, Mama. The machine won't mind. What's a hundred dishes more or less? I'm certainly glad David didn't bring home a washing machine. We'd probably have to undress on the spot. <laughs> David, can't we put the clothes in this, too? No. The directions only specify dishes. Mm. Now, now in the plates go. Here we go. Yes. Put in a dozen plates, all right? 
And the glasses, the glasses glow right here in the middle. Put them carefully, David. Glasses break easily. Not in this machine, they don't. It's the last word. Shh. You'll make it self-conscious. Now then, put the silver in this little basket, darling. That's right. Yeah. And I'll pour in some soap. It all looks too simple to me. Mrs. Brown, don't you have any faith in the 20th century? Now then, we put down the lid and lock it like so. There we are. It's all ready to go. Do I turn the water on, David? Now, let me take one last look at what the book says. Let's see. When lid is firmly closed, turn on water. Hot or cold? Hot. Well, hold on to your hats. Here we go. Oh, I don't dare look. What's happening, David? Here, you can peek through the glass top. Why, it's marvelous. This thingamajig is going around like a merry-go-round. And all the water. <laughs> Just like Niagara Falls. David, you're a genius to have bought it. <laughs> I always said there's nothing like a modern machinery. Look, it's doing the rumba. Now watch. The soap is going to be added to the water, see? It's almost human. It's more than human. It's fantastic. No mess, no work, no water on the floor. Mama will buy you one. Thank you. Yeah. David, is it supposed to make that noise? All of a sudden, it sounds like our car. When you drive it. Did it make that noise in the store, David? That mother, that, that, that noise, mother? It's just part of the way it works, I, I guess. The dishes must be getting dizzy. They look as though they're having a wonderful time. Mm. Yes. Yes, it does sound a little noisy to me. Or maybe we'd better switch it off. In the middle of everything, oh no, we can't. It'll have a nervous breakdown. You know, it is possible that something has gone wrong. David, look, it's not doing a rumba anymore. It's, it's jitterbug. It looks as if it's going to run away. I think something might be stuck inside. Maybe maybe I'd better open it and see. Did the directions say it's all right to open it? I don't see how it could possibly hurt. Maybe you better just switch it off. I don't think you can switch it off until it's gone through all three stages. I'll just uh, open the top a little and see if anything. Be careful, stuck. David. Don't put your head in. Now stand back, you two. Don't look so nervous, Mother. Nothing's going to happen. Oh, what could possibly happen? Such an intelligent machine. All right. All right, now. Get ready. Here we go. There you are. David, you're dry. Hey, I've, I've got soap in my eyes. The dishes, David. They're going to jump out. Oh, I can't look. We can't get it shut. Move aside. I'll help you. Oh, no, well. Oh, Claudia, hold the glasses down. Yeah, here comes the silver. The top's stuck. David, I'm getting I'm turning off the faucet. Don't touch a thing, Mother. Don't touch a thing. The direction says to leave them all. I'm trying to remember them. Men and machines give me the old-fashioned way. My kitchen was so clean and dry. But, darling, look. It's working beautifully. The dishes are immaculate. David, they were before we started. Well, they're more immaculate now. And you're getting your floor washed in the bargain. Darling, don't apologize. I love this silly machine. Just close the top. I'm trying to. Hey, Mother. Mother, come on in. The water's fine. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. Even when they're noisy and unruly... You'll love to have your children's friends in the house because you know that the homes children enjoy are warm, friendly, happy places. Well, there's one sure way to attract the young generation, and that's to keep plenty of Coca-Cola in the refrigerator. How they aim for the icebox the minute they enter, and how they go for those frosty bottles. As a matter of fact, you'll attract folks of all ages if you remember to keep your refrigerator well stocked with Coke. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you, transcribed, with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir and remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. <laughs>